Lynn, I was very lucky early in my career. I started out studying political science and economics and really had this fascination of looking at how different people view the same kind of issues and always been a bit of a history buff. And my first job was actually as a commodities trader in Singapore. So I got to work in Asia for two years and travel around uh, many different countries there before returning to the U.S. Um, to do my MBA. And after that, I became a management consultant. That strategic focus um, came to me uh, through all my work experience. And I was always very fascinated with art, purely because I think it's a carrier of culture and ideals. And design strategy was evolving, I think, much more in the business world with the really notable successes of companies like Apple and Google. So became a natural point of interest and an opportunity to put the two together. Design thinking fundamentally is, is really about experimentation. And I think a lot of the problems that the business world is being called upon to deal with at this point in time, there aren't necessarily any frameworks or answers that we have to go through. Design strategy is very useful because it's always been about experimentation. The way we use it and think about it um, is design has to be a way that can help companies connect with their consumers and forge an emotional connection and dialogue. And that's done through people's experience interacting with your product or service and also the narrative about your company, um, what it stands for, what it's trying to accomplish. And that's something that people respond to and look at very closely today. Let me start by saying I think this is something that can be done in any industry. Um, you know, you look at design and you wouldn't think that the richest industrial designer in the world would be James Dyson, who kind of reinvented the vacuum cleaner industry. But what is it about them? You know, if you had done pure consumer research, you would never have found the consumer to say, you know something, I want something three times more expensive than everything else on the market. I really want it to be bright yellow. And number three, please take away the bag because I have a morbid fascination with all the dirt in my house. But the thing is, when you've gone through almost 5,000 iterations to get something that works, um, those are the insights you come upon. And I think people also, even if they don't buy it, they respond to that narrative of somebody who just didn't give up and who kept trying. My test is always, did this really cause a change in the rest of the industry? And I think it About 60 to 80% of new products fail very quickly. And the ones that succeed tend to succeed very, you know, dramatically, and it doesn't matter the category. And we kind of looked at this phenomenon and said, what is the key to that? And I think the key is being able to create a bond with the consumer. And so we said, rather than testing for whether or not people like something at the end of the process, why don't we integrate that emotional understanding into the front end of the design process and the strategic process? Let's understand what all those personality types are. And then let's look at what makes sense for us as a company, what fits with our identity, who we can serve, and what's the unique value we can then add. And understand that before you start developing. So you really have a very good fit between your strategy and what you actually put on the shelf. And I think the design part is where you really see that strategy at its best is not some very static, paper-driven, paper-pushing exercise. It really has a measurable impact on how the company performs, how people respond to it. So we're trying to advocate that the strategy should encapsulate how you do some of these things. You know, it should help you see what something looks like rather than setting up this very fuzzy goal that doesn't really help people execute. And I think the best strategies in the design world also have that kind of very clear directive.
I think the view of consumers it has really evolved things over to go time. From the I think now world people are understanding world, how that cycle time is a lot quicker. Also, the other reason why emotional connection with the company's mission is so important is with innovation, you never have a 100% success rate. So people need to understand that you're trying hard. They need to understand what your intentions are. And they need to sometimes be invested to help you change course. It's just like people, you know, products and services become more or less beautiful once you interact with them. And companies need friends just like people do, not just to tell you when you're doing a great job, but also they need to help call out missteps help you make things better, help you recover. What allows you to survive is those relationships.